Go ahead. Okay, now you should be good. Okay. All right. Um, so just want to make sure everybody can hear us. And I hear you from Canada. I'm not from Canada. Oh, you're from Canada. Lecture Drew Week. Awesome. Okay, cool. And then um, we just want to make sure everybody can hear us. Follow the host. Where are you guys? We're in Beverly Hills, you guys. This is Dr. Barrett. We've got the beautiful palm trees in the background. And, you know, one of the things that I always um, loved uh, when I first moved to California is I, I felt like I was always on vacation, at least Southern California. It's not so always true in Northern California. There's not too many palm trees up there. But, um, uh-oh, can't hear me. Um, people are saying great English. Oh, okay, cool. Daniel Velasco, you can hear me okay. Is that right? Okay, perfect. Um, so I moved to, when I moved, I moved from Virginia. So you know Virginia, it gets winter, so there's not a lot of palm trees. Okay. And um, cool, thanks Daniel. Um, and it, um, it was, you know, it's, it's a great place. Anybody from Virginia, give me a shout out. Uh, what's up? I grew up in Northern Virginia, a little town called Warrington. And then I came out to Los Angeles and, you know, even though I was in resident, I came out for residency in 2008. And even though I felt like I was um, getting, you know, crushed at work, you know, showing up at 4.30, rounding and staying till like eight o'clock at night, going home, sleep, eat, repeat, you know, sleep, rave, repeat, whatever. Um, rave is all the surgeries we did. Uh, at training, I, uh, I felt like I was on vacation. Every time I make that drive in the morning, I'd see the palm trees and they're like, oh, you know, palm trees must be on vacation because in Virginia, we don't have palm trees. And if you saw palm trees, it means they're probably someplace nice and warm and tropical. So I always, I always like love that. And if you're from Southern California, you probably take it for granted. You shouldn't. These are cool things. Even though they're not native to here, they're actually native to Canary Islands and all this other place. Anyway, um, so you guys, uh, what's up from Vienna? What's up? We used to take the metro station from there into high school. I went to Bishop O'Connell High School. Um, so we're going uh, to talk about how to heal after surgery. Um, is anybody... Uh, Norfolk here, great. Oklahoma, what's up? Um, how to heal after surgery. So if you're thinking about getting surgery, you want to kind of get in the right mindset because you're, you're about to do something to your body that is going to be very stressful. And how you heal, um, how you prepare, and how you heal after that can really affect your outcomes and how, um, how your results heal. Okay. So we know uh, from personal experience and also some evidence that if you get breast implants, meaning you put a silicone implant in, you have a higher rate of capsule contracture if your stress level, your cortisol levels are much higher in your body, okay? So certain people are more prone to that. I think the, the people that always think that, oh, I'm gonna get capsule contracture, or I'm gonna get this complication, they end up getting the complication, all right? There's like, if you go, if you dive down, go really deep here. I'm gonna dive down a rabbit hole really quick. If you, um, if you dive down uh, and, and, and really kind of understand, you can manifest things, okay? The reason why we know this is that when they, when they studied photons, they'd shoot photons against the wall or whatever, and they'd, they'd, they'd They'd observe it, and then they wouldn't observe it. And then when they observed it, it would behave differently. So what that really means is that by observing things, you can change how matter reacts, right? So we all have, a, we all have an ability to manifest things in our world and to make changes based on our thoughts. So when you're trying to heal from surgery, I think that's the biggest thing. When you go prior to a surgery or any kind of big event in your life, you want to manifest positivity. Um, we actually just came... Um, uh, let me go ahead and decline that. Uh, we, we just, we want to, um, I just did a meditation, a guided meditation about uh, after surgery, if you have pain in a certain area, but we're also <clears throat> going to create a meditation prior to surgery, okay? So that, that helps with anxiety and so forth. We have an anesthesiologist here who actually goes through meta, yeah, tummy tuck, definitely recovering. It's going to be rough. Um, uh, you know, you want to kind of go in mentally and do, do some meditation prior to undergoing surgery or any kind of major life event. I think it's really helpful to kind of get focused and to manifest positivity. Um, I do some triathlon races and, you know, I'm not a pro athlete by any means. But one of the things you can do to actually help you perform better on a race is to actually manifest that you're going to do really well. Visualize the different steps. You can do this with, um, if you're going to give birth, right? Visualize the different steps of, uh, you know, the birthing process. Um, my wife and I, we did a class called hypnobirthing, um, which I highly recommend if you have it in your area. We went for like six, six Monday nights and we learned about hypnosis and how to kind of like be in touch with your body. And like sometimes we'd be hypnotized in the middle of the class, it'd be crazy. Um, and my wife was able to deliver naturally with just two Tylenol, all right? That's, I mean, I don't know anything about childbirth uh, beyond, you know, th those things, like personally. Um, but that's pretty incredible that she was able to do that. She's an incredible woman. I'm very grateful. So, um, you know, 
that mindset, I think, is number one. All right. So now, going in, you've had surgery. Make sure you pick a good surgeon. Make sure you're board certified plastic surgeon. Um, so just to catch a quick heads up, guys, we're going to go through we're going to go through the um, some of the tips and tricks that I have for for scar uh, healing and wound healing and healing after surgery. And then we're going to answer all your questions. Okay. So stay tuned at the end, and then we're actually going to go in and we're going to actually take questions from you guys. So um, so first thing, do your research. Get a good surgeon. Um, see if they can inject some numbing medicine at the time of surgery so that when you wake up, your body isn't you know, reacting to the trauma that had happened to it. So the important thing to understand is if you have anesthesia that, that actually helps control your mind so you don't feel the surgery, but your body can still sense things, right? So if I make a cut here on my body, even though I'm under anesthesia, I'll upregulate the pain sensations here. So the, the, the equivalent is like if you were to get a splinter in your finger, and that splinter kind of, you know, doesn't cause pain right away, but then later on it really starts to hurt. That's upregulation of, of your pain fibers, right? So what we try to do with surgery is, before we make an incision here, we numb it up. So not even the cells here or anything of the nerves feel it. And it just like, it wakes up like, oh, there's an incision there, okay? So we try to do that. Try to ask your surgeon to pre-inject numbing medicine. That's what we do for all of our surgeries. And um, <clears throat> then um, we try to be as delicate as possible with all the surgery, handling the tissues properly, uh, so on and so forth, limiting the anesthesia so that once we're done, no more, you know, no more excess gas. You know, that stuff causes a lot of free radicals. It's not the best thing for your brain. All right, so we, we try to minimize that. And then, um, and then while you're healing, um, there's a lot of things that, that we particularly recommend. A lot of it's based on supplements um, and, and, and mindset. So like prior to surgery, if you can do cold showers, that'll kind of help condition you to kind of handle a, a stressful environment, help lower your anxiety. There's a study that showed that cold exposure on a daily basis, or sometimes even less, is actually more effective at treating anxiety and depression than a single medication, okay? There's an actual study that shows that. So um, that's pretty powerful. So you can start by taking just a normal warm shower, and then the last 15 seconds of that shower make it cold. Um, then next shower, do 30 seconds. Next shower, do 35. Next shower, do 40. What you'll see is you'll get used to it. Uh, that's something I do. I hop in a 45 degree bath, uh, plunge, cold plunge, um, almost daily, and I can stay in there for about three to five minutes. Um, and, it, and it greatly increases your ability to handle kind of stressful situations. And surgery is stressful. Your body's going through a lot. Okay, so th those, that's another tip that we're gonna add on before. So you had your surgery, hopefully you have a good doctor, and then um, another thing pre-tip prior to surgery is um, appropriate health and nutrition, okay? So I recommend just a well-rented diet. You know, don't, don't change anything prior to going to surgery. Don't try to starve yourself prior to going to surgery. And don't try to gain a bunch of weight prior to surgery. A lot of people try to gain weight before they get a Brazilian butt lift, but I don't recommend it, okay? Because if you gain a bunch of weight, have the Brazilian butt lift, so which is they take fat from where you don't want it and put it where you do want it, then um, that can actually uh, cause a problem if you lose the weight later on. So your result goes away if you lose the weight. So be at your natural body weight, have your surgeon kind of sculpt your results. All right, so um, one of the things you can do is there's a heal fast. This is a post-op formula, but they also have a pre-op formula. It's available on our website, um, postoprecovery.com. I don't make it, but I endorse it. Um, I don't get anything from them. Um, I'm a big believer in just recommending products that I think are gonna benefit you guys. And so my website is postoprecovery.com if you're, if you're if you're looking for any of these products, okay? Um, and again, I'm, I'm not involved. I do make my own CBD because that one I think is really important and, and we'll dive in on that in just a minute. In fact, can we get our CBD? Yeah, <laughs> cool. Because that's, that's an important one for pain. Okay, um, all right, so important supplementation, right? Supplements, okay? Take a pre-op formula. It gives you a lot of the nutrients to make sure that your body has to heal. And why it's important to do it prior to surgery is because after surgery, your gut is not really in any condition to heal, okay? so. You want to kind of optimize your total nutrition status prior to surgery. Um, that way, that's already those nutrients are already absorbed and you're and you're good to go. Um, safe for llamas. I don't know what that means. Um, okay. So uh, all right, supplementation. That's Heal Fast. That's one of the products. So there's a couple other things out there too, but Heal Fast is a good one, um, and uh, it's got a lot of cool things in it that will we could dive in. I could probably do a whole podcast on this product, but I mean again. You can, you can check out their website and it's good stuff. Or you can check out our website, postoprecovery.com. All right. So the other thing I like is red light therapy. This has lots of uses, this little guy. All right. See that? That is a red light. And I actually do red light every single day because not only is red light good for healing after surgery, but it, um, it's fantastic for wrinkles and um, improving collagen in your skin. 
And how it works is it kind of gets all the way down to the little cellular level and increases the blood flow to, um, to that area. And so you basically put this five minutes over your incision, uh, five to 20 minutes over your incision or your area um, once or twice a day, depending on how you feel. Um, you can even like look at it. You, they, you know, some people like say, oh, you shouldn't show it to your eyes, but believe it or not, there's actually studies that show that red light in your eyes improves your vision. So, um, you know, I've got 20-20 vision and I use red light every single day, um, mainly for my body, recovery, feeling good, setting my clock, because sometimes I get to work it so early the sun's not even out. So there's a whole circadian rhythm with light, um, but the biggest reason why we have it is for pain control. Um, what it does is it relaxes the area, okay? So uh, releases nitro nitric oxide when you expose red light to your body. You know why this is, like, you can prove this to yourself. Next time you get a chance, go outside, take off your shirt or whatever, get some sun exposure, be present and feel what it does to your body. It relaxes you, right? That's why people sunbathe, okay? Now I'm not saying get a crazy ton of exposure and get all the wrinkles and everything and all sunburn, but you'll notice that. Next time you get that sun exposure and you sit out there, it just relaxes you, right? So same thing is true with, uh, with red light, okay? But it doesn't have all the harmful UV light in it, which can cause a lot of wrinkles and uh, skin damage, okay? Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about my CBD, okay. Um, CBD, um, you know, is, is a product uh, that has, um, it gets a lot of scrutiny, right? Um, this is the one that I, I, I made. Um, and I, I curated some of the ingredients in it because there was a couple products out there that were good. I used Wild Health CBD, which is awesome. And then um, I actually created my own version uh, to, um, to kind of go the extra mile. And it's all organic. I just had it recently analyzed. And it's, this is also on the website too. Uh, has a has a whole white page on it. But it's great for pain. And especially if you're worried about pain after surgery, it knocks down the need for opioid requirements for the majority of my patients. So when they take this 1,500 milligrams, it's very strong. Full spectrum, meaning it has other things besides CBD, it has like CBG and, and a couple of other things that we fully don't understand, it acts on CB1 and CB2 receptors. CB1 is anxiety, okay? So you could take this before, take a full dropper before, every night, helps with sleep, and then it helps with pain. Those are CB2 receptors. And there's like real evidence on this, you guys. Double randomized control studies on CBD for pain. And guess what? It is not addicting. Okay. Opioids are addicting. We prescribe them like candy. Yet when we talk about CBD, it's like, hush, hush. You can't talk about that. All right. There's no THC in it. It doesn't get you high, unfortunately. Um, and there's some debate about CBD that, uh, you know, uh, or THC that it may or may not be beneficial because it can interfere with your sleep. But CBD, I think, is, um, is well proven at this point. Okay. The other thing is we got a little CBD balm. I don't know if this is even available on our website or not, but um, this is kind of cool stuff. You could put in the area relaxes the area, softens uh, up a lot of the pain. So that's that's like your number one go-to. Now the reason why it's important to do things other than opioids, utilize things other than opioids to control your pain, is because opioids, they cause brain fog, they slow your metabolism, you don't eat, you lose appetite, um, and you get sweats, and you get constipation. Imagine having a tummy tuck, three, four to five days, you have no bowel movement, you get bloated and you're constipated. Imagine how painful that is, okay? So you really, if you're gonna get a tummy tuck, you really wanna avoid getting uh, uh, kind of hooked on those pain medications. All right, so we're gonna dive into the scars, all right? I know you guys are waiting for the scars. Um, the biggest product I recommend, again, it's not a product that I make uh, or, or have any involvement with, it's called Scanuva, okay? Um, and I've looked at all the products. I looked at Moderma, which I don't recommend. Moderma is very well marketed, but it's onion root extract and is kind of bullshit in my opinion. Um, Scanuva has actually silicone in it, which has been shown numerous times to improve it. It's also got uh, fetal growth factors in it. And basically we, we prescribe this to all of our patients, also available on our e-com store, um, to put on scars. You can put on older scars. Ideally, it's, it's meant for scars that are immediately healed. So two to three weeks. Uh, and then uh, we can kind of massage it in. Okay, now if you guys have questions, keep asking them. We're gonna, we have moderators that are gonna, we're gonna kind of get through these questions, okay? Uh, and stay to the end, we'll get through all the questions at the end, okay? Um, so um, that is probably the number one thing you can do for your scars, okay? Um, is put on a silicone-based scar gel twi at least twice a day. And you wanna massage it firmly. A lot of people, they don't massage it firmly. They just kind of lightly put it on. You actually get a mechanical effect when you massage it that remodels the scar collagen. Um, okay, so um, Skinuva is what I recommend. Take a look. Um, it's not my product, but it's, uh, it's an awesome product. So there you go. All right. Um, cool. Now, 
occasionally um, people want to kind of go the extra mile, and that's this is another silicone-based product. It's actually silicone sheets, and um, I recommend this for very kind of th scars so they start to get thicker. So what it is, you see these little, you see these little silicone sheets. Silgen is a good company. There's a couple other people that make this, and you would want to use this in conjunction with the scar gel like Scanuva because Scanuva has the growth factors in it. Um, they have fetal growth factors in it, which is kind of cool. Like if you ever notice. You probably don't notice this, but if a baby gets kind of an incision inside the womb, it heals up completely. Something happens outside of the womb that allows that we, we can no longer further remodel scars and you get a line, right? So that scar gel has some of those things in it to kind of recreate that fetal wound healing environment so that you don't get um, that noticeable of a scar. All right, so silicone sheets, this is when scars are really resistant. Some people are more prone to this. People that have higher inflammation in their bodies are going to get thicker scars. Um, and some people are just genetically predisposed, okay? So again, low, want to lower overall inflammation in your body and then uh, start to do the Scanuva scar gel twice a day and then these silicone scar sheets on top of that, okay? That, that applies a constant mechanical pressure and what we kind of think happens is there's a hydrostatic force that happens on the fibroblasts, which are the scar cells, that tells them to chill the hell out. It thinks, they think, the silicone makes it think that it's like buddied up next to each other, so it's contact cell inhibition. And so those little fibroblasts don't produce any more uh, excessive or a lot less scar tissue, okay? Um, I know those are fancy words, but good stuff. Silicone sheeting, uh, scanuva scar gel followed by silicone sheeting. And sometimes um, it's important to, depending on where you live and your exposure and where the incision is, to wear a sunblock, okay? Uh, this is his clinical, this is an awesome sunblock. This is a physical sunblock, okay, which means it, it sits on the surface. It doesn't bind to the skin to be created a sunblock. Do you guys know the difference in sunblocks? Okay, there's a big difference. We can go, you know, we can go really in depth about sunblocks, but the major thing is, is, is it a physical block or is it a chemical block? Physical blocks is something like titanium dioxide or zinc oxide that sits on the surface and repels UV light. Like that right there, okay. <laughs> um, really important. Chemical sunblocks are different. They actually have to bind to your skin to create the sunblock. So that's um, really uh, irritating a lot of times, especially to healing incisions. So we want to avoid those if we're trying to protect our scars from the sun. The reason why we want to protect our scars from the sun uh, is because they can make certain scars darker and impair the wound healing environment. Okay, remember that UV light blasts everything. Okay, um, okay. So it's clinical. You can also get this in our e-com store, um, which is a, it's just a high-end product. It's also a little bit waterproof, especially for, you know, if you have an incision in your face and you want to go out in the sunshine to get in the, get in the pool, whatever. Um, and generally, it's recommended to cover your scars with sunblock for at least six months after your surgery. All right? So um, those are some kind of like some, some general healing guides. We talked about the scars. Uh, we talked about the red light, talked about optimizing nutrition, talked about, you know, CBD healing for for some of the stuff. We also, you know, I have a bunch of other products on my website. Um, you know, if you're, if you're getting a tummy tuck and you're getting a uh, breast augmentation where you involve the muscle, you definitely want to take magnesium. We have a bio-optimizers magnesium, which is seven different types of magnesium is super absorbed. What that does is it relaxes the muscle spasms that you get. That's the main reason why we get pain from breast augmentation and tummy tucks is the muscle spasms that happen after the surgery. So you control that, you control 90% 90, 90 of the pain that you're having. You're gonna get some incisional pain and that's where the CBD can kind of kick in. Um, I also have digestive enzymes on there so that can help you digest the food and it helps control inflammation. Um, and we also have a leaky gut guardian also by Bioptimizers. Again, I don't make these products, but they're fantastic products because we do prescribe antibiotics at the time of the operation. Almost everybody's going to get antibiotics wherever you go. Um, you want to build your gut back up after that antibiotic influence. Okay, so, and that's going to help your incisions heal overall and lower your inflammation. Now, um, they did a study on um, people that six months after they get a course of antibiotics, they, uh, it was shown that their incidence of depression shot up by 50%, okay? So we want to combat that. I, I, I can't get rid of using antibiotics because we're cutting your body open and you're, you're, you're getting prone to infections and so forth, but we can reduce the fallout later on by, um, by repopulating our gut in a healthy way. And that's why I like the Leaky Gut Guardian, again, on postoprecovery.com. All right, so we're gonna dive into some questions now um, and let's see what we got. Sunscreen I use, I use is clinical and I also use Abaji's uh, sunscreen. Okay. Okay, question about lymphatic massage after liposuction from Kiki Cat. Um, I, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of evidence out there yet on lymphatic massage. 
but everybody that gets it swears by it. Okay, so I um, I don't I don't prescribe it, but if people are interested, I recommend it. Okay, so it's one of those that's nice to have. It's not 100% necessary. I think anything that improves circulation, blood flow to incisions is a positive thing. Now, if you guys can send me some information about that, I'm all ears. You can send it to info at bare plastic surgery. If you've seen some studies about lymphatic massage and improving, but everybody that I talk to that gets lymphatic massage has been very positive about it. I think at the very least, having somebody laying hands on your body feels pretty good. You know, that physical touch, we need seven hugs a day. I don't know if you know that. Um, so maybe just, maybe it's just a physical interaction that's making you feel good. But um, again, I wanna see the studies on lymphatic massage before I make all my patients get it. What else we got for questions? Tammy got 93 asked, would you recommend microneedling? It helped me a lot with my scars. Yes, so uh, Kimmy, um, she's asking a question about microneedling after uh, a chemical burn. And so microneedling is very, um, is very powerful. It creates tiny little micro channels into the skin. And if you combine it with exosomes or PRP, that PRP and the exosomes can kind of generate a healing response in your skin or in your scar. Now, one of the things about scars is it's made up of a, a single type of collagen. What you want to try to do is kind of camouflage that, okay? That can happen more powerfully with CO2 laser, but much easier with microneedling, right? Microneedling, downtime, two, three days, laser, seven to 10 days, depending on how heavy you do it. So um, I do think microneedling is a fantastic thing. That's what we offer for all of our patients and all of our scars. Um, all right, so. How, does the cream work on old scars as well? The cream does work on old scars, but it's, it's nowhere near as effective. Um, if you have, my, my recommendation is you have a, a, a more mature scar than something like microneedling, or um, CO2 laser is gonna be better for a mature scar. It's a scar that's been healed for more than six months uh, or is pale white. If it's still red that's a gr or pink, that's a great time to start using a scar gel. But if, it is, uh, if it's pale white and it's been old, then it's, it's not gonna help as much. Although massage and that scar gel will help a little bit. All right, so. Uh, does it work on C-section scars? Yes, it does, absolutely. You should definitely be putting in this. The biggest problem with C-section scars is they're, they're focused on baby and they don't always close the underlying, so it kind of adheres down and there's a lot of hormones going on. So you get this kind of like, you know, a little muffin top on top of the C-section scar. So a lot of times we just either revise them or we take care of that as part of the tummy tuck. I'm a plastic surgeon, Kaylee, um, and I'm here, I'm located in Beverly Hills um, and um, you know, we have a lot of content on our Instagram. It's uh, Dr. Daniel Barrett on Instagram, which you guys are, are also on as well. So um, we're gonna see, uh, is it typical for silicone sheets not to stick to the skin after applying Scanuva? Yes, that can, that can happen. So sometimes you might wanna let it dry a little bit and then put the silicone sheets. The, the reason why I like the uh, silicone is they're a little bit sticky. So they, they kind of stick a little bit better. All right. Um, Um, you know, it, it depends, like it, scars at the time of a surgery, um, like, a, like a double lung transplant from Erica uh, Goldstein, which is an incredible operation. You're on a lot of anti-rejection anti medications, which is, uh, is pretty intense, it's pretty hardcore. Not to mention lungs, like those things go out, you, you're, out of, you're out of luck. So, you know, your scars, uh, those are big. Those are big scars for that type of operation. And so my hat goes off to you. You've probably been through a lot. Um, a lot of times it makes sense to just cut them out and start fresh. The reason why is like, like say for example, I do a tummy tuck and I, and I cut the incision. I'm bringing that incision down. It's an unstable platform underneath, right? There's a lot of movement that's going on when it, when it first heals. So when the advantage of a revision going back later, even if the scar heals pretty well, you can cut it out and there's no major shifts going on. We're just focusing right on that scar. So that's why scar revisions tend to do better um, because everything is kind of calmed the hell down. Same thing with C-section, right? You're pregnant, you have a lot of swelling, you have tons of hormones going on, you have breastfeeding hormones, all that stuff contributes to hypertrophic scarring. Um, it's better to let things calm down and then come back and, and revise it. Um, but you can always do the scar gel if you don't want to worry about revising it to calm it down on the way out. So, um, <clears throat> cheek filler, that movement caused a filler beside my nostril. Misha, that's a tough one. I have to see you in person. Um, the best product to get rid of Norse Wally, the best product to get rid of liposuction scars, depends on how bad they are. If you push on them, are they firm? Are they like, does it feel like a little nodule? If it does, then you want to cut that out, close it up. Could be done under local. 
Okay. Should laser treatment help brachioplasty scar? Okay. Um, this is from, let's see, Debbie. Um, you know, brachioplasty scar is one of those, those, those initial ones that could be really tough. And sometimes we cut those out, um, but laser, CO2 laser, is the next best thing. And if you don't feel like getting it cut out, then hit it with a CO2 laser. The laser I recommend, the gold standard, and it was one of the first lasers that ever came out, and it is by far the most expensive for a reason. It's not some cheap knockoff from China. Unfortunately, there's a lot of these tubes that come out of China, and the, and the laser beams are very inaccurate. It's a ultra, luminous ultra-pulse laser. And what it does is shoots tiny little accurate beam, beams into your scar, um, and doesn't cause a whole lot of collateral thermal injury. And then new collagen gets formed up from the inside, so it camouflages it, softens it, drops it down, okay? So um, is there a waiting line to get an appointment with me, um, Marisol? Uh, uh, give us a call. Uh, for some things there is, some things there, there isn't. So I'd, I'd love to meet you. Can belly button be redone under local anesthesia? Uh, Kristen said yes. And that's kind of one of like the, the finding features that I focus on for all my tummy tucks is the belly button. Because I do keep the incision low, right? But even if that's bad, you can hide it in your bikini line. But if the, um, if the belly button looks bad, it's, it's the dead giveaway that you had a tummy tuck. All right, so we had a question about uh, people with color. Yes, Fitzpatrick 4.5, there is a limited use for laser. We can't go full on, but we can precondition scan up to four and five, Fitzpatrick four and five, to do a laser. A lot of times I'll do, um, I'll either do a scar revision followed by PRP. For people with Fitzpatrick four and five, that's people with dark skin, like the color of my shirt. Um, and that, uh, that tends to be a little less problematic in terms of the hyperpigmentation that can happen afterwards. Pitted scars with a red tint, would you still recommend CO2, uh, V-beam? Um, okay, so if you try to V-beam, that should help with a lot of the vascularity. Uh, but pitted scars almost always go for the CO2 laser. Um, the deep FX setting on that should really knock those down, and it might take multiple treatments, three to six treatments. And remember, acne scars, no matter what we do, it only slightly improves it, never fully goes away, okay? Um, if we could, you know, if we were able to come up with a like a 100% tried and true test of getting rid of acne scars, um, we, a lot of people would be really happy, okay? But it just takes a lot of energy, a lot of work to do that. But the best results I've seen are from CO2 laser um, deep FX. <clears throat> uh, implants, okay, implants should be replaced every 10 years, in my opinion. There's a lot of things behind that. Um, and then, um, let's see. The best way to remove arm fat surgery it just depends. You know, sometimes you can just do liposuction on the arm. Um, you know, if you have a lot of extra skin, you might need a brachioplasty, or you could do a, a machine called Renuvion that actually tightens the skin on the inside with doing liposuction. Just depends on the consultation um, and uh, what what your surgeon recommends. All right, rectus diastasis, Jenny, it's a tummy tuck. All right, pregnancy widens, okay, makes room for the baby. We're actually gonna make a video about that next week. Um, and so stay tuned for next week when we do our live next week, and we'll talk more about that and how to fix it. Um, Uh, mommy makeover and BBL at the same time, yes, I call it the grand slam, right? So we do breast lift or breast augmentation, tummy tuck, liposuction, and then we take that fat and we put it in the buttock, okay? So it's called the grand slam because we're doing three areas. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do, and so we do BBL all the time. It's just a little tough on recovery because it's really hard to find com be comfortable, but you are killing three birds with one stone, um, and, but you just got to figure out a way to get comfortable in the bed afterwards. I just recommend rotating. Yes, I am in... Um, Beverly Hills, Cicino Pizza. There's a lot of things that could disqualify people for plastic surgery. The best thing is to give, us, give somebody a call. Okay, BMI limit for mommy makeover. If you have to ask that question, it's probably too high, okay? <laughs> uh, but I've operated on people with very large BMIs. It just depends on the overall health status um, and the surgical plan. So, um, you know, get, get, get after your goals. So like, so ideally, we would get people at, at your goal weight because if we do a tummy tuck, it's like going to the tailor, you know, after losing weight, you're gonna to have to get your clothes fitted again, right? So that the same thing can happen with uh, with the tummy tuck. But I still do it all the time. And some people hit a wall, I can't lose any more weight. And I got all this extra skin. I know I'm, I'm 15 more pounds for my goal, but I still wanna get this surgery done. And then, so we do it, yeah. I have higher risk of complications though when we do do that, okay? Wound infections and stuff like that. So you gotta be mindful of that. Um, stretch marks. Ooh, those are one of the challenging things to deal with, they're also, stretch marks are thinking about it, they're like little scars that form when your skin stretches 
and it just tears. And then all of a sudden, the fibroblasts produce a little line of scarring underneath the skin in the dermis, okay? Um, the goal for that is, again, to camouflage. And they're really hard to improve. It's like 50 to 60 pound improvement in our best case scenarios. Um, and that's done with microneedling, series of six sessions, or in my opinion, the best way is CO2 laser if your skin type qualifies for that. Can a keloid belly button piercing be fixed? Yes, it can. With a combination of steroid treatment and excision. Um, do you guys do F follicular? No, I don't do any hair transplants. Um, Ed, uh, Zeering, Zeering Medical does, does a great job, you guys, if you wanna check him out. I don't, I don't know him, but I, I've seen his results, it looks pretty good. Can a tummy tuck still be done if you have thyroid? Um, just depends on what's wrong with your thyroid. If a hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, get your gut checked. That's probably what causes most thyroid issues. Does Botox uh, filler interfere with the eczema on the face? It can. Um, again, you gotta figure out why you have eczema, all right? It's autoimmune, right? So we gotta figure out what's causing that. Is it gut related? Um, can dental work uh, soon before and after increased risk caps contracture? You know, partially uh, rendered, the question is, can I get dental work after getting implants? I tell people to wait six weeks, allow, a, allow the healing to happen so that if you get little bloodstream back, transient bacteremia, so bacteria can go into your, to your bloodstream from a dental procedure and then seed itself on the implant, that's the theoretical thing. We don't have a whole lot of data on that. I still tell people to wait six weeks. I think before surgery is fine, but wait six weeks after like a breast augmentation surgery to get any dental work done. I don't think it's important to, to do antibiotic prophylaxis every time you get a dental procedure. Because those antibiotics are really bad for your body, okay? Um, do people with darker skin qualify for CO2? Cicino pizza, I answer that, and sometimes, the, the question is sometimes, and depends on the area. Lupus and tummy tuck. Shaniqua Brown, I have done lupus patients, and we have done tummy tucks, and they do fine. Again, we want to figure out why your body's attacking itself. It's most likely gut-related, leaky gut guardian, mass signs, um, food sensitivity test by Everly Well. Figure out what the hell is going on in your body to cause lupus, I actually had lupus antibodies uh, with myself. I had a lot of high antibodies uh, to about 30 different foods, and I healed my gut through a lot of different things, through fasting, through masszymes, which are digestive enzymes, which is also on my e-com store, um, and the Leaky Gut Guardian, which was like the final nail in the coffin. I got all of my food sensitivities down to about four, and they were only in moderate sensitivity. And how I measured that was a test. Again, I had no Connection with it, um, everlywell.com, the Everlywell food sensitivity test. I did the comprehensive one and it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, all this crap. It's like I would eat eggs and I'm like, I feel crappy after eating eggs. And so I cut out eggs out of my diet and then I did all these things to heal my gut. Fasting was probably the most important thing. I did a five day fast if you guys have been following me prior to uh, Christmas and really helped heal my gut in addition to some of these other things like the IGY Max and the Leaky Gut Guardian. These are really, these things shouldn't be foreign to people. They, they're so powerful. Our, our, the, the modern food that we have, um, that we're being told is, is all safe to eat. It's not, preservatives in our food is not good to eat, um, you know, and how much we eat and what we eat is not, um, is not really being taught to us. But that's another topic, you guys. Um, so we got a couple more minutes, we'll answer a few more questions, and then we're gonna end this session, okay? So my favorite procedure to perform, Jolie, is um, breast augmentation. I, I, I love to perform breast augmentation because it makes such an immediate result right away. Of course, I do tummy tucks. They're different in different ways. I, I, I love challenging breast revisions as well because you never know what you're gonna get and what you're gonna have to fix, uh, especially if they're coming from another surgeon, which they typically are. Um, it's kind of like trying to paint on something that's already been painted or cover up a tattoo, any of you tattoo artists out there. Um, do I do anything about ingrown toenails? <laughs> uh, you know, that's not my specialty is ingrown toenails, but I'm sure that's pretty painful. Um, you definitely want to follow up with your, with your doc there, okay? Uh, if my tummy stretched out from years of SIBO, C1, why do you have SIBO? Have you tried fasting? Try fasting for three days to get rid of your SIBO. Um, and um, it depends. If you have extra skin, maybe we need a little, a slight skin excision. How do you treat hypertrophic scars on nipples from previous breast off? Um, I would probably cut it out um, and then close it back up and then do proper scar management afterwards. Things that happens with breast augmentation, you put an implant in, stretches the skin, and then you're also trying to close an incision at the same time. So you have two competing forces. One is the implant stretching the skin, and two, you're trying to keep the skins closed by your incision. That's why I close all my breast augmentation incision in five layers, okay? All right, you guys. Uh, we'll do one more question, and then um, I encourage you guys to follow me on my Instagram, Dr. Daniel Barrett. Um, I know on TikTok, I do a lot of a lot of fun stuff on there, but you're, you're missing out on a lot of the education. I also have a lot of stuff on my YouTube channel as well, Dr. Barrett Plastic Surgery. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, that's where you're going to get really the hardcore 
great information. We have a bunch of series that are going to come out talking about um, how to heal and, and more information about surgery. We've got a couple podcasts that are going to come out as well talking more about stuff like that. Um, Okay, oh, the Costa Mesa office. Um, we have, we have, ask the city of Costa Mesa where I'm getting permission from the city to, to get that up and running. So hopefully any day now. So thank you guys for watching. It's Dr. Barrett. We're here in Beverly Hills. Thanks for tuning in. Um, again, please go ahead and, and, and like and follow. Uh, check me out on Instagram. We're going to have some more stuff there. And uh, let us know um, if you guys have any questions. And for the next, we'll do this again Wednesday of next week. Thank you guys.